Thank you so much, Marta. It is a tremendous honor and a big surprise to be here as a fellow. How do we understand the American experiment in its current condition? When I was 23 years old, I took a class with Roger Smith, who was inducted into this organization in 2011 and is here today. I'm sure I'm not alone in turning to his book with Phil Klinkner, The Unsteady March, The Rise and Decline of Racial Equality in America, as the ballots were counted November 5th. In that work, they argue that progress towards racial equality in the US is neither the norm nor an inevitable outcome of political contests and popular will. Instead, the default condition of our country is retrenchment and resistance to racial equality. Progress occurs only in under rare and fragile conditions. I have seen aspects of this lesson reflected in my own community, Asian Americans. Our beginnings in this country were marked by legal exclusion, labor exploitation, and violent attacks by white vigilantes. Yes, Asian Americans have worked to improve their marginalized position. But the Asian American quest for racial equality has too often meant the benchmark and goal has been to be part of the white status quo. No historical example is more glaring than efforts by Asian immigrants to challenge legal restrictions on naturalization and exclusion by arguing that they were white. In 1927, the mother of a Chinese student in Mississippi petitioned for her child to be classified as white instead of quote unquote colored so that she could attend a white school, a case that reached the Supreme Court. These individuals may have been challenging state exclusion, but their actions underscore troubling dynamics in the pursuit of equality. Fast forward to today and we see familiar, similar troubling approaches. Consider the wave of hate crimes against Asian Americans following Donald Trump's blaming of China for the spread of COVID-19. Asian Americans mobilized to bring attention to anti-Asian racism through the hashtag Stop AAPI Hate campaign. By some measures, they succeeded. About half of all Americans became aware of the spike uh, in, in anti-Asian hate crimes. However, another disturbing trend emerged. Attention to white supremacy, particularly after Trump's use of the term Kung Flu, and a white shooter's attack on a Korean spa in Atlanta, was redirected via viral videos to street crimes involving Asian victims and black attackers. Many of these incidents involving elderly Asian victims were not necessarily motivated by anti-Asian hate, but nevertheless perpetuated a false and powerful narrative of black criminality. They distracted Asian Americans from the root causes of hate violence. Between 1992 and 2012, Asian American support for Democratic presidential candidates rose from 31% to 73%. This is the largest gain among any group in the US, 31% to 73%, that's huge. Yet despite his anti-Asian rhetoric, Trump increased his share of the Asian American vote in 2020 compared to 2016 and gained even more in 2024. Anti-black hate crimes also increased during the pandemic, yet this reality received less attention in California, where the black population is less than half the size of the Asian American population, black people reported five times the number of hate crimes as Asian Americans. Research conducted in 2022 revealed that the general public was far more aware of hate crimes against Asian Americans than black Americans, despite both groups experiencing a rise in such incidents. While Asian Americans succeeded in raising awareness about anti-Asian hate, we missed a critical opportunity to highlight the broader ways in which racialized violence affects all communities of color. The recent Supreme Court case banning race as a separate factor in college admissions offers another example of how Asian Americans' quest for inclusion can fail to advance equality. 
The argument that Harvard and UNC's admissions policies discriminate, discriminated against Asian Americans won the case against affirmative action. It also revealed the perils of seeking access to elite institutions when they are built on an educational system that is unequal, segregated, and rooted in anti-black racism and white supremacy. I often hear Asian Americans express a desire for a seat at the table or lament a lack of belonging in the US but as the writer Viet Nguyen reminds us, the quest for belonging is fraught. If we claim America, we must claim all of it. It's hope and hypocrisy, profit and pain, liberty and losses, it's imperfect union, and it's enduring racism. Thank you.